Sega never really does take their characters too seriously, and they don't really add detailed things about them. However, with Mephilus, they have gone extremely deep without actually telling us. I'm Lord Danny, and I'm going to tell you why Mephilus the Dark is a sociopath. <laughs> For this video, I'm going to be looking at the aspects of a sociopath and linking them to the characteristics of Mephilus the Dark. I will leave a link in the description below if you want to see what the page I'm looking at is, and if you want more details on what a sociopath is. So the first point on the page is the lack of empathy. Sociopaths have an inability to feel sympathy for others or to understand the emotional consequences of their actions. Now that sounds a lot like Mephilus. Mephilus has no empathy whatsoever, and he actually laughs when he kills Sonic and sees Elise's despair. As for the emotional understanding of their actions, Mephilus does understand what kind of reaction he will get. He knows that he'll make Elise cry if he kills Sonic. Next, it talks about a cold and calculating nature, the ability and willingness to use others around them to personal gain. Again, very similar to what Mephilus does throughout Sonic 06. He manipulates characters such as Silver, Blaze, Shadow, all because he wants to join with Iblis in order to become Solaris. The third point here is shallow emotions, lack of real emotion in response to events, and limited capacity to feel love. Now in the games, Mephilus feels no love whatsoever. As for the lack of real emotion, it's very obvious that Mephilus doesn't have actual emotions. The only time Mephilus expresses true emotion in the game is towards the end where he's able to reunite with Iblis once again, and in this scene he's extremely overjoyed. Other than that, Mephilus has no real emotion whatsoever. Next we have Narcissism, a personality disorder in itself in which the individual feels strong love and admiration towards themselves, often a defence mechanism against deep-seated low esteem. Now in the game, Mephilus loves to remind characters, mainly being Shadow, that he has a lot more power than anyone else around him, which is a clear trait of being a narcissist, as narcissists believe that their attributes are amazing and they love their attributes above all else's. However, Mephilus wants to become something much more than what he already is. Now, a narcissist loves themselves as they are, while Mephilus wants to become something completely different. He wants to become Solaris, which is nothing like him as a person, or being, or whatever you want to address Mephilus as. But overall, we can safely assume that Mephilus does show traits of being a narcissist. Next, we have a grandiose self-image. They might see themselves as someone who is superior to others, and sometimes even experience delusions. A sociopath might see themselves as a fitting ruler of a country, or even the world, but might also have delusional beliefs, such as seeing themselves as a god, or having superpowers. This point really does sum up Mephilus' character. He wants to become the sun god Solaris, hence having godlike delusions. He also sees himself above everyone around him. To him, he is superior and no one else is above him, other than Solaris, of course, but in his mind, Solaris is just him. So a grandiose self-image really does explain Mephilus' character. Next up is Charming. While the sociopath is unable to fully understand the emotions of others, they are capable, but rather highly adept at mimicking them, and might appear to be charming and normal at first. Now, Mephilus doesn't seem normal when he's first encountered. He seems quite creepy and quite dark and mysterious. But because he words things so truthfully and sounds quite honest when he speaks, he was able to manipulate Silver and Blaze into doing his bidding. He also exaggerated his hatred towards humans in order to try tempting Shadow onto his side, which again, he probably didn't have all this fury towards the human race, but he was able to mimic it quite well. Next on the list is high IQ. Often sociopaths will exhibit a high IQ, which they can use to manipulate and plan. Now, Sega have said themselves that Mephilus does have a high intelligence level, so his IQ is obviously quite high. He also uses this to manipulate and plan, as we have seen in the game. After all, Sonic 06 is basically just a game showing Mephilus manipulating a number of different characters, and in the end it shows that his plan does work out. Of course, Sonic does foil his plan because it is a Sonic game, we can't have the villain win, but it does show that Mephilus does use his intelligence to manipulate and plan, because Sonic 06 is literally just Mephilus' plan being put into action. 
Following on from that point, we have manipulative. Sociopaths use their superficial charm and high IQ to manipulate others to get their ends, and their lack of empathy allows them to do this with no sense of guilt or remorse. I don't really need to cover this point because I just described it in the high IQ and of course the lack of empathy I discussed at the start of the video. So again, being manipulative is a sign of being a sociopath which is seen clearly in Mephiles' behaviour. Next we have secretive. A sociopath has little need for others and is highly secretive in their actions. It is so obvious in Sonic 06 that Mephiles is hiding secrets from the characters. He doesn't tell a single character of what he wants to do. He tells them different stories in order to manipulate them, as I've just talked about in the other points. Mephiles is extremely good at keeping his secrets. There's not one point in the game where the characters turn around and go, Hey, do you think that Mephiles is actually trying to fuse with Iblis to become Solaris? No one really suspects his actual motives. They do get suspicious of his actions, but they don't know what he's actually trying to do. So Mephiles is incredibly secretive, and he's actually really good at keeping secrets. Next on the list we have Sexually Deviant. The lack of remorse, guilt or emotional attachments means that the sociopath is happy to have affairs and to engage in questionable sexual activity without questioning their desires. Now, in a 12 plus Sonic game, you're not exactly going to have a character having affairs with other characters and causing a lot of trouble, so it's hard to tell if Mephiles is sexually deviant or not. However, from the way he behaves, he doesn't actually seem to have any preferred sexuality. It's worth noting that in the games he does avoid contact with females, and he only talks to three male characters, well Omega is partially male, I suppose he counts as a male, never mind. But other than that, he doesn't speak to anyone else. So we don't really know if Mephiles prefers any gender, or if he likes to have affairs, but we can only assume that he does, because the way he manipulates different characters by telling them different stories, could also affect his sexual life if Sonic was an 18 plus game. Next up we have Sensitive to Criticism. That said, like all narcissists, the sociopath will desire the approval of others and will be highly sensitive to criticism. They often feel they deserve adulation and admiration of the world and might feel victimised. Now again, this is a point that I'm not sure would actually apply to Methodist's as character, and also I don't know if this is actually relevant to what I'm about to say right now, but it's worth noting that there's a scene where when Shadow turns him down, he looks absolutely in shock and offended, and he responds by attacking Shadow. That happens twice in the game. In fact, before both Mephiles boss fights, Shadow turns down his offer. So I'm not sure if that counts as being sensitive to criticism, but it shows that he is sensitive to people turning down his offers, and he doesn't like being told no. Next we have Paranoid. Often their lack of understanding of emotion along with their incongruous self-view means that they feel a lack of trust and paranoia. Now, Mephiles doesn't seem like a paranoid character, but it's safe to say that he doesn't exactly trust anyone. Though he knows that he can manipulate people into doing his bidding, I wouldn't go as far as to say that he could trust them with particular tasks. So, paranoid? No, Mephiles probably isn't paranoid. But untrustworthy of other people? Yes. Despotic slash authoritarian. Often the sociopath will see themselves as a necessary authority and will be in favour or totalitarian rule. Now this just links back to the whole godlike delusion that sociopaths have, and what Mephiles clearly has. So not much is needed to be said here, because Mephiles really does see himself as an authoritative figure, except he does sort of want to devour time, so maybe he doesn't see himself in charge of anyone in particular, but he does see himself as an authoritative figure over time and space. Next we have Lawfulness. Despite popular belief, a sociopath is not likely to be a problem to the law in later life, but rather will seek to find loopholes, to rise to a position of power, or to move to another area so that their behaviour is tolerated. Now, this is a hard one to decipher regarding Mephiles' behaviour. Mephiles moves between Silver's timeline and Shadow's timeline, so he does hop around quite a bit, which a sociopath is set to do. As for moving around just to get his behaviour tolerated, I wouldn't say that's necessarily true, but I do think that in his mind, if he stayed too long with a certain character in a certain timeline, then his behaviour will be noticed. 
so he has to keep his distance and keep moving around away from the characters. Regarding the idea that sociopaths aren't necessarily a problem to the law, it's probably safe to say that Mephilus himself isn't really a big problem. It's when he merges into Iblis to become Solaris, which leads to the problem. Because before that, he's just kind of wandering around, telling people what to do, but he's not causing any actual problems because no one really notices him. So by himself, Mephilus doesn't really threaten the law at all. Next, we have low tolerance for boredom. Sociopaths require constant stimulation and gets quickly bored. Now, at no point in the game do we see Mephilus when he's bored, but we do see that he's constantly entertaining himself. He likes to cause trouble just for entertainment, he likes to really pick at Shadow, and during the boss fights, he really does mock Shadow, and he also enjoys mocking E123 Omega, which isn't really for a purpose because he doesn't try to manipulate Omega, he just likes to mock him. So, a low tolerance for boredom is most likely something Mephilus does have, but it's not really demonstrated in the game. Now we have impulsive behaviour. A lack of regret and empathy means that sociopaths are more likely to make sudden rash decisions based on current facts. Now Mephilus is actually a really patient character. He's slowly working towards his goal of becoming Solaris and devouring time and space, but he never really does act quickly to achieve this goal. The only time he seems to act really rash is during the scene where Shadow refuses his offer to join his side, because his response is just to attack Shadow in his crystalline form. So impulsive behaviour is not something I would say that Mephilus had that was very obvious, but there are hints that he does have it. Next we have compulsive lying. As part of their facade and as means to an end, sociopaths are compulsive liars and will rarely speak truthfully making them hard to pin down. Now let's face it, every single line that Mephilus says in Sonic 06 is just a plain lie. Want proof? Unless you complete your task, your future will remain the same. Forever. The answer is yes and no. It doesn't matter how many of them are before. Join me, Shadow. Let us teach this world a lesson and rewrite the future. I don't even need to say anything more right now. Mephilus is definitely a compulsive liar. Finally, we have the McDonald Triad. In childhood, sociopaths will likely have demonstrated the McDonald Triad, also known as the Triad of Sociopathy. These are traits that are often demonstrated in sociopaths from a young age. These include animal cruelty, such as pulling the wings of flies, etc., bedwetting, and pyromania, an obsession with fire setting. Now, Mephilus has never been young, but he does have an obsession with pyromania because he really wants to fuse with Iblis and his interest in Iblis is extremely weird. He has no other interest but in Iblis. Now I know that Iblis makes him become Solaris, the sun god, but Iblis is the flames of disaster, that's what he's known as. He is a fiery being when he evolves enough. So it's safe to say that Mephilus does have an interest in pyromania. As for bedwetting, I don't think Mephilus did wet the bed. I don't know. Ask Sega. They, they might be able to answer that question. And animal cruelty. He's cruel to Silver. That is animal cruelty. In fact, he's just cruel to everyone, animal or not. So there you have it. I've added up all the qualities of a sociopath to the qualities of Mephilus' character. And he seems to fit the description of a sociopath perfectly. I do hope you enjoyed this video. And I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments below. Are there any other characters in the Sonic franchise with a particular disorder? Maybe I'll see you again in a new episode. Anyway, I'm Lord Danny, signing out.